in this series, I've been showing you what the most powerful stuff in VBA is. But the truth is, things move to the next level when you start combining those individual techniques together. And that's what we're going to do in today's video, advanced VBA techniques combining together. Specifically, what do we want to do? Well, welcome back to the Excel VBA Real World uh, Series Season 3. And we're looking to produce our form analysis. We've got to a situation where we've got the result of the last game appearing. We want the last three games, and we want them appearing across here. How can we do that? And we can't answer that with a single VBA technique. It's going to be a com combination of loops, conditional statements, position control, and variables. And this is where the magic happens, guys. So a big welcome back. And remember, if you've enjoyed this series, it's been a pleasure putting it together and bringing these videos to you. You will love our member communities. This is a good illustration of the depth and detail we go into in our members' communities. And of course, um, I support our members you know, via email and, uh, and we interact. We have live sessions. So just take the time to go and check out our member communities. I'd love to see you there. With that said, let's get back into our task. And as I said at the beginning, what we're looking to do is to get our form analysis stacking up here. Hmm. There's something else we have to bear in mind. We're only interested in the last three fixtures. So how to do that? You know, that's a tricky one conceptually. We did put it in our notes at the beginning. You know, we want to move over for the first results and the second result and the first, third result. Let's create some column headers to um, reflect that. So I'm going to say result one, result two, and result three. And then let's say result one is the most recent result here. Hmm. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just copy the formatting here. Control C, Control Alt V T, and then I'm going to need a slightly bigger column header. Alt H O H forty five here. And I'm going to do the same here. Just going to copy this formatting over. Uh, shift and down arrow here. Control C, holding down the shift key, using the arrows, control Alt V and T. That just brings our formatting over. That looks so much better, doesn't it, when you get that formatting done. Hmm. So result one is the most recent. What does that mean in the context of our setup here? Well, that's the result closest to the bottom of our database, or I should say data set. Some people get triggered when I call a 3 Excel a database, because we know we're looping from the bottom of the data to the top of the data. You go back to earlier in the series if you want to understand how that mechanism works. Hmm. So we want the result from 37, match week 37, that's most re recent, 36 and 35. We want those results. So of everything we've learned so far, and we've learned about loops, variables, position control, all kinds of good stuff. What's going to help us do this? Let's get back into that translation mindset right at the beginning. What might help us do this? There's multiple possible approaches. Hmm. My idea would be to use a variable to control how many results we've got in here. I'm going to say dim game number. This is going to be the variable as integer. So once again, it's an informative name for the variable. And I'm going to say declare variable to uh, store uh, the game number, uh, e.g. IE, should that be most recent equals game one? And there we go. Now, I like the idea of using a variable to do this because it gives us some flexibility here. Hmm. Flexibility in terms of how many games we look at. We're only doing three games here. On our series, Form Analysis series in Excel VBA Football Traders, we do six games and we do home games and away games. Yeah, so go and check out our community. It's all there for you guys. But it should give us give us uh, flexibility. Hmm. What do we want to do uh, with this game number variable? Well, when we find the team and we find a result that we want to record, what we're going to do is just in increment up that variable. So A equals A plus 1 is our foundational concept here. Increment up the game number variable. So try to keep the as high, even though I'm pretty tired now. I've been recording for about two hours. Increment up game number variable. Okay. Now, it's always a good idea to initialize a variable at the beginning. If you don't tell Excel to do anything with a variable, it will just have a value of zero. But for completeness, 
So game underscore number equals zero. Let's just initialize, initialize, initialize the variable there. Hmm. Okay. Might be overkill, but it's just good practice, isn't it? Good practice to put comments in, good practice to put do the end indentation. Let's try to keep those standards high. Okay, game number equals game number. Not a particularly useful line of code, plus one. Hmm. So when we find the first um, result here, first result we want to look at, that should increment up the variable, and that should give us result one here. Hmm. Okay, let's test this with the message box. So I'm going to say message box game number and, 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 then, and then the speech marks, and then I want the name of the team as well. So active team. Hmm. So once again, it's a test. And it's a test to need another answer on that. It's a test to we've put something in. Yeah, we've done a little bit. Let's test it. Don't leave all of that testing to the end. That's when things get really messy. So I'm going to put a breakpoint in here again. Hit F5 to run this code. We're getting one greyhound. OK, what else would help us here? Say and again, and the space. And let's say fixture counter here. I want to know which row XLVBA is on. Stop again. Got a breakpoint in. I'm being very deliberate about that breakpoint because I don't want to get into a situation that we had earlier in the series where we just got loads and loads of message boxes and we have to force, we have to break, um, hold down the escape key. Want to avoid that. One Greyhound 355. Now, this is more interesting for us. So it's saying Greyhound's first fixture is on row 355. So we're going to start at the bottom, scroll up, and row 355 is here. Seems to make sense, doesn't it? I can't see any other Greyhound fixtures below. OK, what we're going to do is just to make this clear, I'm going to filter this data. So Control shift right Control shift down Alt-A-T. Whoops. I'll do this in, in break mode. Ooh. OK, not sure what happened there. Control S, save the file quickly. Uh, control Shift right, Control Shift down, Alt A T. Our, our filters on, Alt and down arrow, and then E takes us to this text text box, and then I'm going to type in Greyhound here. And enter. You can see we've got all Greyhound uh, fixtures filtered there. I'll say bye for a second. So you can see the first game that it picked out was on this row here. I'm just going to hit play again. One Greyhound 355. So you can see this setup. I've got Excel next to the VBA editor, message box flashing up, and I've got the data filtered. Really nice debugging setup, setup here. F5, two. So the second fixture is on 335. 335, which is there. Fantastic. And the third fixture, which is the last one we want, hit F5, going to run to the breakpoint, 316. We can see 316 there. OK, good. Interesting. So the basic mechanism seems to be working. But remember, we only want to do the first three games, don't we? We don't want form analysis for 30 games or 37 games, however many match days there are. So this is a really tricky one. And we're going to throw in a really powerful advanced VBA concept here. I'm hoping it's going to work. We're going to find some kind of solution anyway. How would we do that? So once we've found the third game, this is the concept. Let's get into translation mode. The concept is if we find three games, then we don't want to look any further in this data once we've found three games. Hmm. How might we do that? Stop the video. Maybe go and do a bit of a Google search, you know, develop the meta skill of searching for solutions, VBA based solutions online. I do plenty of that. Don't worry about it. Um, let's try this. OK, have you seen this coding construct exit for? Now, we're in a for next loop. I'm about 50% certain this is going to work. I'm going to say if game number, so now you can appreciate the benefit of having this variable. If game number equals 3, because remember, we're incrementing up. So if equals 3, we've got three games, then exit 4. Exit 4. Just get out of this loop, stop looking up this data set, and then we'll move on to the next team. That's the idea. That's the idea anyway. Let's see what happens. Well, I could implement the same 
coding setup here. I'm going to say bye for a second. So we'd expect the same thing to happen. I'm going to hit play. Greyhound 355. Play again. Greyhound 335. Play again. Greyhound 316. Now what's going to happen? We've got three games. Hit play again. Okay. Okay. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I think it's all right. That wasn't what I expected. So let's see. Let's see what happened there. So let's just see if I... Mm, okay. Let's go ahead and do something else first. What I think's happened, I think that's actually exited both, both of our four loops. Now, I just wanted it to exit this loop. I think it's actually ex exited both of the four loops there. Hmm. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's just delete this and let's just run the analysis here. Uh, no, I've got the message boxes in. That's not good. You see that and it stopped. So this exit for us, hoping this was going to solve everything for us. Uh, interesting. Okay, right. I might have to look for another solution here. Hmm. Okay. I'm, now, what seems to be happening is I was hoping we'd, we would just exit this loop, but what actually seems to be happening is we're exiting both of our loops. So we're also exiting, exiting this loop here. Hmm. Interesting. What's the solution going to be? I'm going to keep the video rolling. Let's find a solution here. Let's put this back in. Just want to understand what's going on. Oops, control Z. In, play. Play two Greyhound 355. Three Greyhound. All right, let's stop and play that again. One Greyhound 355, yes. Two Greyhound 355, yes. Three Greyhound 316. So we've got our third game in in there. Oh, and then, then it exited. Okay, let me try that again. Let's do this a bit differently. So let's hit play. Five, five, two, Greyhound 3353, three, Greyhound 316, and then we'll stop there. Okay, so I'm hitting F8 here. The results come in. Now, this condition is satisfied. It's a simple conditional statement here, one line conditional statement. So we exit the four, and that exits both of the fours. Yeah, I, I just wanted it to exit this loop, and we can see we're actually, oh, are we? Explain to me what's going on here. Ah, no, no, it's not. Okay. Oh, so basic. You've probably be, probably been screaming at your um, laptops. Can you see what's happening? We need to reset this variable for the next team. Otherwise, it's going to think it's already got three games and it's not going to do anything for the next team. I thought that behavior was very unusual. Okay. But you can see I got a problem. I got it wrong. I worked through it. And all we need to do now is reinitialize this variable. There we go. I can even take this, optimize, save a line of code here. We don't need this line of code anymore. But so we're just resetting for the next team. That, that is gold dust you know it go and run that back through that happens all the time and i was applying high level debugging skills to work my way through that as, as well as a little bit of resilience like i was thinking okay let's just shoot this video again i'm absolutely putting that online that really is gold dust i think that kind of thing so um shall we just go ambitious here let's get rid of the message box i'm so confident I'm going to go control S here. I think the whole thing should run again. The whole thing has run. So Greyhound's most recent um, result was, was two. That makes sense. Oh, the, the third result was two. That, that makes sense. Let's go for somebody else. Let's go for Beagle here. Oh, I've got Beagle and Greyhound. Get rid of Greyhound, please. 
Yeah, I'm not very good at operating filters. Uh, fans of the channel will know that. So the third result was one for Beagle. Oh, oh no, Be Beagle at home. Uh, Beagle aren't playing at home. So uh, we're only looking at the home form, of course, on our XL VBA football traders community. We've got a much more detail to it. Look at the home and the away form. So let's look at Jack Russell Hen. Uh, up and down. Evil Jack Russell. Okay, so that should be a one, the third most recent game for Jack Russell. The one. And then let's prove this, change the source data. Should be done with care. As I said, we've got to make sure we change that back, but we should now see, yep, Chris going in there. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty confident in that. That should be a one for a home win. Okay, so we're getting that. We're getting that. Um, let's finish this, finish this off. What's the last thing we need to do? We want these results to appear across here. Yeah, result one, result two, result three. How will we do that? Really, if you haven't stopped the video when I've been telling you to stop the video, please stop the video now and try to do this last bit yourself. Okay. So this line of code is transferring the result. So all we need to do is say two plus game number, and then it's going to be minus one. In fact, all we could just... So two, two takes us to this column, which is the, the first column, then game number is going to be one, two, three, or four. So one would take us to here. That's why we need the adjustment. We need the minus one at the end. There we go. Okay, then we need a message box at the end to say we're finished. Message box, let's say complete, and then zero, comma, and then, um, in fact, I'm going to say form analysis generated here. Generated, and then zero, and then complete. Now, this last component, that means it doesn't say Excel, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Excel at the top of the message box. We don't need that. We know we're in Excel, hitting F5. Form analysis generated, and I can see result one, result two, result three. Right, what do we want to test? Let's go border collie here. And it's going to go border collie. I'll test two, and that's going to give me enough confidence that this is done. So border collie should be X one X. Border collie is X one X. Fantastic. And then I'm going to go. Let's go Dax hunt. Is that how you say that breed? Why am I choosing the most difficult breed to say? Uh, let's go. Okay, and the and the most recent fixtures are X one. I can see one X one in there. Okay, so you should do more testing. Yep. Um, good. So I'm pretty confident with that. So we've managed to generate our form analysis, and it's only three games, isn't it? And it's only for the home team. You should challenge yourself. Can you generate the away form? Could you give the user the option to choose how many games to generate form for? Could you create a single numerical measure of the form? You know, their form is three out of three, 1.2 out of three. In the example I shared in the first video, could you do that? So there's many, many more challenges. But if you're thinking, Chris, I'd love to do that with you. Thank you so much. I'm sure one or two people out there are thinking that. Check out our Excel VBA for Football Traders community. We've got a whole library of content like this, me working through real-world tasks based on the work that I do, based on requests I get from our viewers. Also got our Members Monday community, if you're not specifically into football data, very similar. A whole library of content of us working through real-world tasks like this, and you get the two live sessions a month with me, of course, in Members Monday. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Go and check out our members' communities. The links are in the video descriptions below. Take care. I will see you in another video on the channel.